Hello there Sagittarius, welcome to your tarot reading. So um, I want to start off by wishing you all a very happy birthday. Um, I hope you enjoy, you know, the rest of this year. Um, let me just talk to you about what I saw and I'm still trying to make sense of it, but maybe, you know, in the process of talking about it, um, I'll get some clarity as well for you guys. So first of all, I saw this, I saw two images and the first one is, uh, I saw this squirrel, okay? So he's found like two chestnuts or, uh, two acorns on the ground. He has something on the ground and he picks it up and he has two and he's holding it in his little front paws and he climbs up a tree and um he has a tree that he always goes to to you know um put away his stash and he looks around to make sure that no one sees him and then he burrows himself into this little hole in the tree and then he puts away his stash and then he kind of like pokes his head out looks around to make sure no one sees what he's doing and then he exits the hole, climbs back down the tree and starts looking around for more resources, for more acorns, for more things that will sustain him through the winter, okay? And so when I saw this, I was just thinking um, like, there's a, it's okay for us to take care of our assets, okay? It's okay for us to kind of like cover our own behind. It's okay for us to be a little bit selfish and, and learn to take care of ourselves. So that was like the initial message I got in, um, that came through. And so what I feel might be really important for you guys as we round out this year is for you to re-examine your financial assets, okay? Look through your ledgers, look through a bank account, look through uh, wherever it is that you swirl away your money to make sure that things are where they're supposed to be, okay? So I feel like there might have been... Um, like uh, wrong charges to your bank accounts, to your credit cards. Uh, there might have been money, you know, uh, inadvertently like taken out or there might have been uh, wrongfully charged transactions. So I feel like it's really important for you to kind of like look through your financial um, ledgers to make sure everything is uh, up to date and to make sure that everything is squared away the way it should be. Um, I'm also seeing this uh, sneaky behavior, not in a bad way, of course, um, of like needing to separate your assets, needing to kind of like swirl money away in a place where you know it's safe, okay? So like um, having a safe place or a safe space for yourself or for your financial resources um, would be really good for you. Having a safe place place for you to be in, uh, for you to like uh, retreat to when things get a little bit dicey, wherever, with whomever you're dealing with, that's also going to be very crucial for this month, okay? So I, I almost feel like you're gearing up for battle. I almost feel like you're um, contemplating or, or thinking about some major big change in your life that requires quite a bit of financial resources or even resources in general, whatever that might be, time, money, uh, energy, um, you know, just like you're, you're gearing up for something really big and you need to have, you need to make sure that everything is lined up, okay? So I have a, a Sagittarius moon and I know Sagittarius people really really hate like bookkeeping itemizing making lists making you know check off things and making sure every little thing is where it's supposed to be like that is one of the worst things that a Sagittarius um you know would like th that's one of the worst things that um I feel you know you can subject a Sagittarius to because you guys don't like to do these little minute details that is time consuming and tedious and, and, and overall it's not really fun. But because you don't like to do it, I feel like there's more urgency for you to do it, especially for the month of December. So I feel for many of you, this might be a good time for you to just, just you know, lay out everything in front of you and just, you know, take a few hours of your day and try to knock those things out, okay? For many of you, this could be like um, end of the year, um, you know, like accounting, okay? So 
<clears throat> itemizing everything that you have spent, all the, the expenses, all the expenditures, all your revenue, like whatever it is. I, I see a lot of just numbers, a lot of things in front of you that you have to like uh, itemize, square away, file away. And I know it's very tedious and it sounds so excruciatingly painful to have to do, but it's really important that you do it, okay? So that's the, uh, the first thing coming out. And uh, the theme that I'm seeing is definitely um, kind of um, echoed in the cards, okay? So let me show you all the major arcana cards, and I'm trying to make sure I don't lose the order here. We have the High Priestess. We have Temperance. Let me show you this card. Temperance. This is your card. We then have the Strength card. Then we have the Magician. So four major arcana here. We have the devil. And then we also have the hierophant. So what I initially picked up as uh, pretty much the theme for this reading is uh, I almost feel like there is a, a, a huge tug of war happening within you, okay? In your psyche or in your emotional state, okay? Um, and I feel like what it is, is um, you know, there, there's overall what I'm seeing as, um, as a sense of like restraint and then wanting to, the, the opposite of that. So there, on the one hand, there's this duality about, you know, having a lot of self-control having a lot of control in general, having a lot of restraint, doing things the proper way, itemizing everything and making sure that, you know, everything is like calibrated, carefully planned out, carefully thought about, okay? And then the other side of you just wants to like dash in, you know, get your hands dirty and then ask questions later. And these two sides of yourself are kind of like at a, um, it's like a, a tug of war happening within you and it, it frustrates you. That's what I feel. And I also feel like with this energy, the high priestess hanging on to something very, very tightly, okay? Uh, caring for something. And uh, I almost feel like you might be overstepping your boundaries when it comes to the way in which you take care of another person. And I don't feel like this is something that's happening overnight or it's something where it's like, you know, once in a while, I feel like this is an ongoing pattern or an ongoing process in which you're doing everything for another person. For some of you, it could be a child. You're, you're not allowing that child to be, you know, self-sufficient. Um, for others of you, it's like, you know, taking on the role of the uh, maternal, the, the parental figure so that you're doing something completely for another person and then they come to rely on you and then they don't know how to be self-sufficient, okay? This is like holding on, wanting to control a situation very, very much, like so tightly that it, it stifles the growth of that entity, that person, that child, that plant, that house pet, that baby, whatever it is, it's um, it's stifling the potential and the growth potential of that entity. So I feel like this is an ongoing process because I feel like it has dragged on for many, many years. And so once we become aware of it, as you guys might have been uh, aware of it, it's really hard to loosen the reins, right? It's really hard to kind of like, um, be so emotionally wrapped up and invested in something and now all of a sudden you're forced to kind of like, you know um, Back off pretty much and now you're 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 wrecked with anxiety because you're just like well If I backed off, you know, it's gonna fall apart. It's so delicate and it's so fragile What's gonna happen to it? And I feel like it's not really in your control it's not really your place to um, to exert that much control and influence over that entity. So I do feel here the universe is pretty much telling you to loosen the reins, okay? 
loosening the reins doesn't mean that we're no longer in the driver's seat, we're no longer in control. It just basically means that we're practicing kind of like loving detachment and we're allowing that entity enough space and enough distance to, to, to grow. And we're allowing ourselves to, you know, trust that we have done a good job so that when we loosen the reins and back off and, and step aside and watch it from the sidelines, that it's still going to be able to function and perform the way that we we expect it to, okay? So I feel for many of you, this is a very maternal, paternal type of an energy where you might be, you know, for example, your kids might be going off to college and you're just like, oh, you're wracked with anxiety and you're not really sure how they're gonna be able to take care of themselves because they, you've taken care of everything for them. And then for others, this is like, you started a project, a really, really big project. It's like your, your, your love child, you know? and um you're you're launching it and you're just wrapped with anxiety um not really knowing how it's going to take off and then for others this is like a relationship partner that you might have to detach yourself from okay um and uh, i feel really funny saying this to a uh, especially in a sagittarius reading because you guys are very live and let live you're not clingy you're not uh you know you're, you you don't tend to overstep emotional boundaries in this way but i feel like for whatever reason you're emotionally very invested in this entity and so you want it to do well and you see it as an extension of you as well and there, regardless of whoever or in whatever capacity you're dealing with this entity, um, I just feel like there's also like a, a sense of paternal, maternal pride associated with it, which might not be completely healthy if it's like a relationship partner, right? But I also feel like, I, I also feel as if you understand yourself that is not healthy, that you kind of need to, you know, um, this is like, I almost feel this element of control, okay? The bird is like holding the reins, controlling this wild beast. It seems to me like there's an element of control. There's an element of like, you know, something that's very mechanical, something that's like automation, something that's just like going with the flow, uh, not having to think. You know, somebody who is well taken care of, that they never have to think about what they need to do to take care of themselves. And when we put another person in this type of a situation, we take away their free will and their, their human agency and their ability to act and think for themselves and their ability to grow as a person. So I do feel like this energy might not be completely healthy. So if you're aware of this, it is time for you to really, really loosen the reins a lot more so that you know this situation can um can start to i guess thrive and flourish on its own okay um next to that i have here the devil and this is like uh, the way i look at this card is it's something that's very debilitating okay it could be physically mentally health wise but this woman, she's got a blindfold on. So I feel like it's like a, a situation where we're, um, we're in denial of something, okay? We're in denial of our, for some of you, dwindling resources, okay? And um, of course, not all of you are going to be in this situation, but I do feel like we can no longer be in denial. We need to, you know, take out the spreadsheet, go through all, all of our bank ledgers and try to figure out, you know, how much financial resources we have at our disposal, how much we can afford to spend, how much we, uh, how many more years we need to work before we can completely retire and be comfortable financially. Um, we need to see, you know, if we're planning to sell a house, for example, we need to look at the market price and do some preliminary research to see how much the house is worth. So I feel like there's a lot of financial planning here that you haven't been too savvy about, that you need to, you know, um, work at 
And I, I do feel like it's better for you to be ahead of this energy and to know how much assets you have and to know your financial standing and your financial situation um, before something else happens. So I, I just feel like there's something you've been in denial about and um, you kind of brushed it off, brushed it off. And it's really time for you to just, you know, um, face those fears because, you know, if you think about it, you know, all the, in, in, in the previous few years, for example, the previous five years, the things that you really feared once you face them head on, and you realize they're, they're not that, that, you know, scary, right? So we have a, a habit of making like mountains out of molehills. And so when we don't like to do something in our heads, those um, annoyances or those things that we don't want to do, they get bigger and bigger. And I feel like if you just sit down and tackle it head on, it's not going to be that bad. So I, I, do, I would urge you to not procrastinate on this and just, you know, take off those blindfolds and really look at, really get the proper information to know exactly what you're dealing with. Okay, so, so that's the really important message because, you know, it's all concentrated in this area where the five major arcana cards are located. So I do feel it's time for you to kind of like have mastery over this situation, okay? Get out from behind the, the steering wheel and just, you know, look at the situation and, and examine it and have control over it. So the magician energy is, it's a really strong energy. It basically indicates manifesting, being able to turn a situation and manipulate a situation um, in your favor. So I do feel like things are not what they seem and they're not that scary. So it's really important for you to, you know, own up to your sense of power and take control of this situation, okay? Um, so those are like all the disparate messages that I was um, picking up from that first image, okay? Um, the other thing that I do feel as well is um, if you're dealing with another person and you're financially, you know, linked up with them, okay? Um, the devil energy and the eight of pentacles uh, really indicates, you know, a situation that you have really worked hard at. And um, I do see a little bit here about, you know, um, the, the, the environment, other people, circumstances, life choices, events, culture, religion even, that's um, pigeonholing you into doing something, right? And um, I feel like, you know, you, you, you were expected to do something and you stuck it out because that was what was expected of you. And I feel almost like whatever that was that was really expected of you, you never questioned it. You never questioned, you know, is this the right path for me? Is this my destiny? Is this something that I really, really want? Is this, you know, you just took it at face value that that was the best optimal outcome or that was what was expected of you. You never questioned it. And coming into this month, I do see a lot of self-awareness, a lot of realization, a lot of this energy here with the High Priestess. It's like really knowing ourselves, knowing deep down in our hearts of hearts, in the recesses of our minds and our hearts and our soul what is good for us what what really inspires us what really excites us what what we really want as an individual once we peel away all those layers of you know societal expectations family expectations doing what is required or expected of us because that was what we did because we were um it was imposed upon us so I do feel here, you're casting away those chains, okay? Literally just like breaking free. And I feel starting over. And I feel as well figuring out, like very carefully measuring and, and trying to figure out if this didn't work for me, if I've worked really diligently, you know, for the past eight years at it, and it wasn't right for me, what else is there? Like, what, what's the alternative? 
what's the outcome and i would urge you you know don't sway too far on the opposite ends of the spectrum okay so for example you might have been that you know really really diligent student uh, going through med school law school or doing something you know like working on your master's degree or phd and then you're just like i'm burned out i am um i'm having doubts whether or not this is the right career path and then you know um the the opposite end of the spectrum is just like dropping school altogether withdrawing from all of your classes and taking a sabbatical and just you know traveling for three years i would say the answer that you're looking for is somewhere in between and you don't have to take such drastic changes okay a lot of the times when we feel like we've been shackled or or stuck in a situation for so long once we have our sense of freedom back we feel like we want to you know go wild but i i do sense in this situation it would be best for you to you know have a game plan lay out something like a blueprint of the alternative courses that you might take okay for some of you this might be a schooling situation because that courses it, it, it resonated so i feel like chart out a new course for yourself to figure out what's a more moderate or less um, uh, extreme road or route that you can take in uh, once you've decided this is not right for you what is a more or, or a more moderate or a better fit for you so so going from there okay so don't let your energy fluctuate to the other end of the spectrum because i feel like you might make some decisions that you're going to regret okay so just uh, just a heads up because i do feel this um tug of war and you know when you you look at people in a tug of war it's like you have a bunch of people on one team and a bunch on another and if they're constantly tugging then no one's really falling down however if one side side decides to just let go of the rope the other side will be able to pull and then all of their members will like stagger to the floor right so i feel like maintaining that 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 push and pull and also that equilibrium is going to be really important so that you don't um so that you're still you know finding your center and so that things don't drastically go awry okay so i hope that the reading still resonates and i hope that you're still watching this and i hope that it is still going to be helpful for you guys now the last four cards you have some really good amazing cards okay so i feel like there were some major things hurdles that you have jumped through as we round out the month of November. And so we're going into December where a lot of this is still in your head. And it's still kind of like, you know, plastered, I feel like on the, the right side of your head. You're going about your day, but you're still thinking about it because it's plastered on this side of your head and you're still like, it's weighing you down a little bit. It nags at you and you're just like, okay, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. But I do feel like, you know, finances needs to be uh, ironed out. Um, figuring out the next path. I feel for many of you, I, I do see a lot of people who might have finished like a specific course of study and now they're contemplating um, do I go for more education or do I want to get out into the world and make money? For some of you, you're impatient. You, you want to go out there and make your mark on the world, make money, and not be like, um, you know, struggling financially while you're in school. It's, no, it's not fun. And so you're really trying to, you know, grapple between like more schooling so I can like increase my earnings in the future or start working now so I can get the work experience while the going's hot. I feel like you're grappling with these major life, like life change and, and, and um, turning points in your life. For others as well, I feel like, you know, divvying up your assets. So it could be like, um, it, it could be like filing for something, filing for something and you, uh, filing papers, filing for something and you're trying to swear away or swirl away some assets, hide some assets. 
so that it doesn't show on your statement. So there's something like that happening. And um, I just feel like moderation is the key, okay? Um, anyway, so on this side, there was another image that I saw and it looks really good. I'm, I actually feel like I'm gonna clear these off because I feel like that energy is done and over with, but um, let me just leave the cards out here. So what I have here is the 10 of cups. This is a beautiful card. I have the knight of pentacles. I have the Hierophant, we saw that earlier, and then the Two of Cups, okay, so these are lovely, lovely cards. So what I saw pertaining to these four cards is um, I see a woman's hand, um, there's like a, a bowl, a plastic bowl, and there's um, some dough, like some some flour and water and a little bit of salt, so somebody's like kneading some dough, right? And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with um, baking and kneading and, and you know, flour and, and things like that. Um, so to, to knead dough, you need, you know, flour and water, right? And you have to be really careful about the amount that you put in. It has to be measured. It has to be measured, okay? Measured perfectly right. So if you put way too much water in, it gets sticky and it just gets into every crevice of your fingers and it's really frustrating having to knead it because it, it sticks everywhere. And then if you get it too dry and every time you thump it down into the bowl, the, the dry flour fluffs up and gets all over your face, gets all over the, the counter, it gets all over the surface that you're working on. So a delicate balance, okay? Anyways, I, I see these hands kneading dough and so what I feel is there is a specific area in your life where Sagittarius, you just want to jump right in, roll up your sleeves, get your hands dirty and just, you know, indulge, okay? Like I, I feel this really strong tactile, um, it's, it's very tactile, it's very like it reminds me of like one of the, the, the Cancerian reading for last month where I, I felt like they were just frustrated. They wanted to indulge. They wanted to like, you know, devil may care. They, 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 they just wanted to have fun. They don't, didn't want to answer to anybody. They didn't want to restrain themselves. They didn't want to do something. They, they didn't want to be, um, to, to have to um, hold themselves back. So that's what I felt it's, it's like. And for many of you, I feel like this is your energy or another person that you're dealing with. Um, so here's what I'm sensing, okay? There's like a, a relationship situation here. There is a relationship here. And there are some scenarios that are uh, coming up strongly. I feel for many of you, we have the Hierophant and the Two of Cups. I feel like you might be dealing with someone who's in a relationship, who's like already married, okay? And then I also feel like the connection between the two of you is very strong, okay? It's like the, the fish, okay? And I almost feel like the two of you, if you work together, you're a very good like partner. Like, like work, the work relationship is amazing. The two of you, if you were, you know, um, if, if you happen to be both single and dating, this is like a power couple. I always think of the fish as like, you know, it, it generates prosperity and that's why we have like fish in the koi ponds, right? So it generates prosperity. So it's like the, together, the two of you would generate a lot more money as a couple. So this is like a power couple dynamics that I'm seeing here. But I feel like you might be married or they might be married. But the connection between the two of you is very undeniable and it's really strong. And the two of you have this really strong, playful energy with each other. And I do feel like, you know, there's a lot of tension. There's a lot of like this um, romanticism that's kind of like suppressed. And that's why I just kept feeling like, you know, you, you really like this person and they likewise, they feel the same way about you. And I felt like you just want to just 
just ignore that responsible part of yourself, you know, hey, I'm in a relationship, or hey, they're in a relationship, we shouldn't go there. You, you kind of want to ignore that part of yourself and just like plunge right in, get your hands dirty. Okay, that, like that's what it feels like to me. And then for others of you, I feel like for, for whatever reason, there's something about this relationship that's taboo, okay? I do feel for many of you, cultural differences, even though I don't know why that would be taboo, or even uh, like a, a workplace romance where it's not allowed by HR, for example, or you don't want to taint this relationship because you work together. Um, there might be religious factors, there might be family, um, you know, like for example, your, your family might want you to, you know, um, date somebody from a specific religion, you know, date somebody from a specific race. There, there's something here about like, I almost feel like star-crossed lovers meeting somebody at the wrong time, okay? And um, I also feel like there's a lot of restraint here. It could just be a professional type of a relationship and you want more out of it and the other person um, also wants more out of it. The Hierophant um, screams out to me like tradition, you know, like it's the pillar of morality. So I feel like there's something here that might be posing as a huge temptation for many of you. And um, you're, you want to indulge in it, but I, I do sense like, you know, you're, your judgment or the, the other person's uh, judgment or the other person's sense of morality or your own might be at risk or might be, you know, uh, on the line as a result of indulging in this type of a relationship. So that's what I'm seeing here with the bottom two cards. For those of you who are dating new people, okay, like you're, you're in the dating phase, getting to know, uh, trying to figure out are we exclusive and things like that. You have some really amazing things coming through um, The partner that you're dealing with I have here the knight of pentacles This is somebody who's still trying to figure out things in their life. Okay, it's a very slow moving character He's not getting anywhere. He's better off getting off that animal and just walking, you know in his heavy armor So I feel like you're dealing with someone I'm getting the word clumsy Okay, clumsy. So I'm hearing that um, you might be dealing with someone who's a little bit inexperienced. Inexperienced when it comes to relationships, when it comes to intimacy, when it comes to being uh, a good relationship partner. Um, it doesn't mean that they have any bad intentions. It just means that they need a little bit more guidance and they need a little bit more time. So you have to be very patient with this person. Okay, so I feel like there's someone who's clumsy. So for example, if, um, if they're, you're like going on a date, they might not, you know, open the doors. They might not uh, open the car door. They might not uh, be aware that you have certain food allergies. They might not be aware that you don't like uh, a specific type of food so I feel like it's somebody who's like still new at this and they're taking their time and um, you you can you have to be very patient with this person and I feel like you know beneath that armor is a heart of gold like it's someone who's really good okay who's very thoughtful they, they're just they need to you know come into their own a little bit so just please be patient and I also feel like they're very serious, like they're looking for their happily ever after, like looking for a solid relationship. I have here the Ten of Cups, and this is a family card. And, and what I do see with this card, once again, you know, interracial couples, um, people who have differences when it comes to their political beliefs, their um, ideological beliefs, their, their uh, profession, their career goals and even their religious beliefs. Okay, so I do see this is kind of like that star cross crossroads, but life wouldn't be interesting unless you're dating somebody who's different from you, right? So that you can learn. So I do feel like there's an element here about, you know, two people who are very, very different, but and yet when they come together, there's great complementarity because they're learning a lot from one another. So I do feel there's a 
potential here for a relationship that will, you know, stand the test of time. It's also interesting enough to keep you learning and growing and to keep you interested. And then I also feel, you know, it's stable enough where it can lead to the whole marriage. It can lead to long-term commitment and it can lead to a lot of compatibility once you've worked out all the kinks, okay? Um, so I feel like you just want to plunge right in, get your hands dirty. But when it comes to relationships, you know, like cooking, you want to make sure the pan is in place. You want to make sure you preheat that oven. You want to make sure that everything is lined up systematically so that the kitchen doesn't end up in utter chaos with flour everywhere, you know? So I, I feel like in, in this situation, moderation is key and holding yourself back and it, it is really key. So reining yourself back so that you don't scare the other person off or even sabotage the situation by rushing too fast and getting yourself into a situation before you, you are clear with the other person, you know, what their expectations are, what your expectations are. Um, for those of you who have been waiting on communication for another per from another person, excuse me, I have here the Knight of Pentacles. It's going to come in this month, possibly when we transition into the sign of um, Capricorn. So that's like the, the cutoff is around December 21st. I feel like the, the, the messages are come, slowly coming in. And I feel like one of the reasons why there is significant delay is when I look at birds, I think of them as messengers, okay? They chirp, they make noise, they announce their arrival. And with this owl, the owl stands for wisdom. And I feel like this person doesn't just want to communicate, they want a, a thoughtful sentence. You know, they, they want to construct a thoughtful narrative in their mind first before they communicate. So they're not going to, you know, shoot off like whatever comes to mind, like, hey, in a text. They're going to take their time to construct their sentences, to ask you meaningful questions, and to, you know, follow up with the conversation with meaningful responses. So I feel like there's somebody here that has been mulling over thinking heavily about like how to communicate, how to reach out, what to say. And I do feel like there's just um I feel like you're dealing with someone who's uh whose feelings run really deep and they're almost um it, it almost frightens them too. So in that way they're, they're not like immediately, you know, they're, they're not like emotionally uh, expressive because their feelings get the best of them. They could be very deeply emotional, but they put on a, a, a brave face, okay? I'm looking at the armor, the scale on this, um, the carapace on this tortoise or turtle. And I just think like it's somebody who's, you know, who, who's got thick skin. They, they, they've they developed thick skin as a defense mechanism. But deep down, they're very, very soft to the core. And as a result of it, they're not very forthcoming and, and uh, expressive with their emotions because they don't want to be in that position where they feel vulnerable. But at the same time, they also don't want to rush into things. It's like, I don't bite off more than I can chew. And when I start something, I intend to finish it. So I feel like that's their MO. That's the way they operate. And they, they don't want to rush into a situation unless they are 100% sure they can follow through. Or unless they are, unless you can convince them that you're 100% in it. So you have somebody who I, I feel is taking a liking to you, Sagittarius. And... Um, this is somebody who's going to be very different from you. So for example, if you're dark skin, they might be light skin. If you have dark hair, they might have light hair. If you have dark eyes, they might have light eyes. I also see an element of religion as well, okay? Religious, like, um, 
someone who's very religious, someone who's not. Someone who's um, very family oriented, and then the other person's not. So the, the, the lifestyle that you lead, okay, so it's like one is a land animal, one is a, um, lives in the water. So I, I feel like there are, there's just enough to keep things very interesting. And there's also an element of like cultural differences. And you guys love people who are different from you anyway. So I feel like you're so attracted to this person. And I, I also feel like you're very exotic in their eyes and they're coming. It, it's almost like you're so different. They don't really know how to approach you as well. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing. Um, I feel like this is going to be a great month, but you need to take care of these things. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you're able to wrap up these issues as we, you know, close out November so that in the month of December, you can, you know, have all of your energy to devote to this because this is very lovely. And these things are tedious and boring, but, you know, we have to be adults about it and we have to take care of adult responsibilities, okay? And then you can reap the benefits of this. So, I hope the reading is helpful for you guys. I do wish you all the best. Have a very happy birthday. Uh, have a wonderful holiday season as well for those who are celebrating Christmas and New Year and uh, even Thanksgiving. I wish you well and take care of yourself, Sagittarius. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Soon. Bye-bye. Soon. Bye-bye. Soon. Bye-bye.